Hello, everybody. Hi, I'm, guys. I'm Jesse with the Two Sticks and String podcast. And I'm Alex of the Hound Strings podcast. And this is not a regular episode. Nope. For either of us. Nope. This is just a fun special that we're doing an extra. Exactly. Because we're in the same place. We are. That doesn't happen very often. It doesn't. Because where do you live, Alex? I live in San Diego County, California. And I live far, far away in Germany. And that's where I am right now! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Yay! I've been here for coming up on two weeks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we've had such a fantastic time together. Absolutely wonderful. And we decided that we were going to have this fun little podcast. We did. And we get to talk about all of our travels with you, but that'll be later. And mm -hmm. we get to share some of our knitting and crafty goodness. Of course. What's better than that? Because it wouldn't be an episode of either of our podcasts without it. Exactly. So right off the bat, keep in mind, as we said, not a regular episode, so new viewers. This is not a normal one from us. You can go uh, to a few weeks prior and you'll see one of our regular episodes mm -hmm. on either of our channel. I am found on Two Sticks and String on on YouTube and I am Army Wife Knitting Life on Instagram and Army Wife Knit Life on Ravelry. And I am Hound Strings here on YouTube and for um, Ravelry and Instagram things, I'm trying to work on um, new names so I won't give anything away right now. Okay. Just because, but if you message me, I will, I will get you set up on Insta or on um, Ravelry. Awesome. We have some admin things to do because I had a cow and you did, and it was the. Thank you for being a friend. Cow closed on March thirty first. And it was all Golden Girls related. So we have some prizes. I use random number generator. They are written down here. Who won? So we are going to do pattern prizes first. But first, what we'll do is this is the prize for the lucky it's winner. It's so pretty. <laughs> Isn't it? <coughs> They get to see it in person, but I think they might still have it. They do still have it in their Etsy shop. This is the Golden Pearls. Go check them out. They're absolutely fabulous. And they have... hair. <laughs> I shed. It happens. <laughs> Sorry, guys. If you get... If you win this and it has some of my hair in it, it's just extra love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's about all I can say. I'm sorry. I've got a lot of hair. But this is from the Golden Pearls. And they're right here on the boardwalk. And this is a enormous sweater size bag from Molly Klein Design. Oh, really? I was looking at that earlier. I thought it was... Mm -hmm. Oh, now I see that it's folded up. It's folded. It's cute. I yes. like that. And it's still in its packaging. It's brand new. And winner is of the pat first pattern prize, because there are two. Number 52, Renegale. Woohoo! Yay! And these are my drumsticks for the drum rolls. <laughs> Professional. Hey, you gotta I should have a drum roll. You gotta have drumsticks to do a drum roll. That's true. I should invest in some drumsticks. <laughs> Chicken ones or actual wooden ones, you think? Wooden ones. Knee slapper! <laughs> Drumstick went flying, y'all. Drumstick went later. flying. Could have killed me! It doesn't matter I'm sorry. That it, went, it doesn't matter that it went under the table and away from me. It could have killed me. You never know. Exactly. You could have killed me with your prayers. <laughs> That's right, Esther. Gosh, Joe Gina. <laughs> Key and peel. Key and peel. Watch it. It's naughty Watch. though. But There's hilarious. language. There's a lot of language. But it's funny. <laughs> Watch it. Okay. Pattern prize winner number two. <laughs> Shut 
Je vais essayer de danse. Deux. Un. Or try. <laughs> Winner is number 51, Raven Diva, aka Tyra. Yay! Yay! Woo! Yay, Tyra. Yay, Yay Rana. Rana. Yay, Tyra. Yay, Rana. Yay! Message me on Ravelry and any pattern that is under $7, your choice. Let me know and I will mail it to you. Well, I will gift it to you on Ravelry. Not nice. Mail, that's silly. All right. And here we go. Grand All prize right. winner. It is number 19, Mrs. A. D. Herbert. What? Are you serious right now? Baby. That's what Siri said. Siri said you're a winner. This is not rigged. This is not planned. It is just random number generator. Number 19. Number 52. Number 51. You can see my chicken scratch. You will all be darned. So, so I don't have to ship it. Oh, yay! Yay! I love it. Hooray! And this is, well, I mean, as of the past couple of weeks, because I got to see it when, I got to see it before she drew the numbers. I didn't get to see her draw the numbers, but um, I absolutely love the project bag. Because so stinking cute. She's being housed in my craft room, which houses all of my giveaway prizes too. <laughs> so she and the rest of her stash. Cute. Yes. Yes. It's just so she wins. Hooray! Yay! I was not expecting that, you guys. That was hope quite the surprise. Hope you have room in your suitcase. Might I hope so, me. too. I well, then I got, I'll, I'll be able to squeeze it in. I hope. I hope so, too. <laughs> All right. I do have a cow that is going to be starting on May 1st. Ooh, is this your Yoo-hoo! Big, Big Stash Blowout! It is indeed. It's a year-long cow. Well, make-along. We'll call it a make-along. Mm. Year-long mal. It goes from May 1st, 2019 until May 1st, 2020. And that is because in 2020, we are currently set to... We are currently being told we will be moving. That is when our time at this assignment ends. So we could end up extending here. We might be moving somewhere else in Europe. We might be going back to the States. We know nothing. However, we are only allowed a certain amount of weight each time we move. And my stash has grown a little bit. <laughs> little bit. Just a little bit. Since moving here. So... I need to get some of the stash moving and out of my house and out of its skein form. It needs to become, it needs to grow up and become a project and it needs to become gifts and things for people. So I sent this cow to help me mm -hmm. and hopefully you'll participate. I know I will be because sooner than that, I will be moving myself. I don't know exactly when, but it'll likely be, um, End of summer, early fall. Granted, I know. I'm so excited. You should be. And granted, my stash, I don't have quite as much stash, but proportion. <laughs> e but stash. I think proportional to the time frame in which I am moving, it's quite a bit. Yes. I'm using the portion of my stash to when I'm moving. <laughs> I got some work to do. But the basic premise of this cow is pick a goal. I don't care if it's you want to finish five projects. I don't care if it's you want to use 12 skeins of yarn. I don't care if it's you want to knit up 100,000 meters. Pick a goal. It doesn't have to stay the same goal. You can change as the year goes. You can make quarterly goals and then reassess. Um, you can do whatever you want. I'm a very easygoing make-along person. I don't have a lot of rigid rules. Um, 
my personal goal is I'm trying to do some so that at the end of every season I can assess where I'm at. And so I'd like to finish 10 projects before the end of summer. Um, and I'm also, as I've said before, I'm keeping track of everything on an Excel spreadsheet. I would like to get at least 10,000 grams knit up before the end of summer as well. So it's going to be definitely more than 10 projects, depending on the projects I choose. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and I just, I want you guys to participate because it's fun and we buy all this beautiful yarn mm -hmm. to use. Exactly. And even if we don't know what we're going to use it for in the moment and we're looking for that just right pattern, generally we intend to use it. Yeah, it's not just a buy because, ooh, shiny, it's going to forever sit in skein form. Generally not the intention. But there are going to be prizes given for this. Yeah. However, I'm going to do prizes a little differently. They will be quarterly prizes. However, I am not sending ooh. out yarn as a prize <laughs> that would kind of defeat the purpose it defeats the purpose and so i might send a project bag i might send stitch markers or notions Ooh, um fun. i might do two or three patterns to a person to help you use your stash and so there are prizes it's just not going to be a yarn prize i just want to put that up front so good I, to know yeah <laughs> because i feel it's silly and my, I'm pretty sure my grand prize for at the end of the make along is you get to pick an ebook. Ooh. As long as it's below thirty dollars, I will get you the ebook of your choice on Ravelry. Nice. So, I think that's kind of that's exciting because I can't tell you how many ebooks there are that I want, but I have such mm -hmm. a hard time justifying getting one for mm -hmm. myself. So, I'm gonna make it happen for one of you. How awesome is that? Sweet. Yay. All right. So let us, we're going to take a pause here because we've had enough te technical difficulties for a day. <laughs> and you probably remember that from our first joint episode. Yes. <laughs> so we're going Pre to take a pause. <laughs> Preventative measures. Yes. And we'll see you in a few seconds. See ya. Bye. Welcome back to our TED Talk. <laughs> For that people today. Yep. We have some foes to show. We do! Woo -woo! Yay! You go first because right. you have more than me. And I actually have two. If if you've seen my podcast, this doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. Except for the first episode, but that was kind of cheating because I already had some before I even thought of doing the podcast. But anyway, I digress. I have a pair of socks complete. Woo! Woo! Woohoo! And just as an FYI, we will be listing um, the pattern names and the designers in the caption. They'll be right here. Mm-hmm. Or right there. One of the two. Somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere on the, the bottom. bottom of the screen. Um, like Follow but... bouncing ball. <laughs> Karaoke. We're singing along. <laughs> Tell so me about your socks. So this pattern is, well, at least share the name of the pattern, but this pattern is in St. Olaf. I call them my roses dog walking socks. Mm -hmm. And this is made in Regia Fiafadig. Good job. Hey, It's getting so good. <laughs> it is getting better. Um, so it's a good. I still can't string a sentence together, but Me at least I know I know how to pronounce words correctly. Woo! -hoo! Um, but this is right here. Yeah, this is you'll probably recognize the colors from the from my last episode and from our first uh, joint episode. And again, I call these my roses dog walking socks because they were made for the. Um, thank you for being a friend, Cal. Hey, that's my cow. And what? Yes. And I call these roses dog walking socks again because they're a little, a little mismatched, a little off kilter, just <laughs> like the character herself, but Definitely still very practical and smart. 
and mm -hmm. they're named for the fact that Rose and her actress Betty White love animals as do I and the neighbor dog Dreyfus makes a couple of cameo appearances. What do you mean you like animals? I didn't know this. Really? <laughs> I say this as she works for a humane society. Yes. Wanted to be a vet for 20 bajillion years. Yes. And worked at the San Diego Safari Park. Mm -hmm. Kind of have to like animals. Kind of do. A little bit. And I work in adoption, so I get to work with the animals and people. So that's like, both worlds. I don't like to work with people. Eh, sometimes. Eh, but we digress. We digress. They're so, so pretty. They are so pretty. And I actually finished these. Um, Your first night couple, here. Yeah, my first night here. You just had like a few rows and a bind off. Mm hmm. So I am very happy. Woo! And I have my only finished object, you guys. One is the lonely number. One is the loneliest number that you ever knew. It's, it's pretty good for true. not having. Pretty good for being sick and not having a voice. I know. High five. <laughs> We're both kind of sick. That's why I'm wearing a big comfy sicky sweater, which is the Flax by Tin Can Knits. I knit this. This is my first ever pullover cardigan, which is why there's so much puckering because I didn't. I didn't do it right. <laughs> But it's comfy. It's cute. I would I would have thought that was part of the design. But... Nope. <laughs> nope. But um, I left out the garter stitch panel on the sleeves. And this used to fit me at one point, but it no longer does. You can even see it in my sleeves. They're enormous. So I guess that's a good thing in huh? a way. Because it means that I'm healthier than I was. <laughs> but it's annoying because doesn't fit right <laughs> it just I kind of swim in it but I digress socks Yee! these are my desert vista dye work socks for the month <coughs> and it is the neon spring colorway from her on her zian base which is her sparkle base the colors are coming up a little more muted on the screen because these are like neon think of um jelly beans or peeps yeah. Yes, that is a very good color description, except the blue is, this is a more purpley. These are closer mm -hmm. to the purple peeps than the blue peeps, and this is technically a blue stripe. Um, I didn't expect it to be a blue stripe, but that's what it's listed as. Uh, anyways, I call these my Neon Frühling socks, because Frühling is German word for spring. And I, of course, always use the same vanilla extract sock pattern by Cassandra Rosardi, a.k.a. Resonitz. And a fishlet's kiss heel for my heel. Nice. And very are, cute. And these are my knitting left sock blockers that I got as a gift for Christmas from my friend, Melissa. They're so cute. They have my Instagram name, my old podcast name, and my catchphrase. Yay. I love them. Those are so pretty. And I say it every time I use these. Thank you so much, Melissa. They're my prized possession. <laughs> They're special. All right. We also have some what? Oh, you have your. I still have one more. Sorry. My last FO. Sorry. Right. I finished my Luella top. Woohoo! I'm so happy. And again, very, very muted. You will see pictures um, at the end or somewhere, somewhere in between. Because um, it's bright. They're very brightly colored. It's very brightly colored. Yes. So the pattern is by Suzy Sparkles. Again, sparkle, we'll have it. Sparkle. <laughs> Again, we'll have it at the bottom of the screen. Um, but that was one that I have completely memorized. And this is the lace panel or the lace yoke. It is so, so pretty. Now I will say for the um, the diamonds on the bottom, those were in the pattern. This is the only thing I'm going to give away, by the way. Um, in the pattern, it, those were supposed to be um, little popcorn stitches. But since popcorn stitches is not going to show up, we're not going to show up on this yarn. Um, I did yarn, -os, yarn overs instead. And the yarn is Ba La Hoya. 
in the Market Flowers colorway. And it's so pretty and it fits like a dream. I love it. Yay. And it's gorgeous I, on her. Thank you. You're welcome. And this is a pattern for purchase on Ravelry, but well worth the price. And I will be making another Ooh. in the future. I don't know when that's going to be, but um, probably in a little bit later color, um, mm -hmm. single um, single color rather than a tonal or variegated, um, just to show off the stitching a little bit better. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Gorgeous. Sorry, Laura, for the bad fake mm -hmm. New York accent, but gorgeous. We have some whips. We do. She has more than me. I know. A rare thing for me. I'm normally a monogamous knitter. Miss Monogamous, I call her. <laughs> but this time I have a couple going on at once. I only have two. I'm being very restrained. <laughs> that is pretty restrained. So would you like to go first? Or? I will show one of mine and then you can show. Okay. So my first whip. Oh, those are so cute. I love this. This is a sock for my mother in the Alice colorway. That's cute. From And this is from Moose and You Yarns. And I always smile when I work with her stuff because... She's from Kansas, and I lived in Kansas for a very, very, very long time. So it's like getting a little bit of home when I get a package from her. And this is the colorways. It's obviously inspired by Disney's Alice, and I, of course, have a Simply Serving Progress Keeper from So that. cute, the sea turtle. Because the turtle is my husband's power animal. <laughs> He's, it's adorable. Oh, Yeah yours mine is the start of let's see i think i have an insert out who cares it all looks the same either way at this point yes. at this point but i have the bridget hat after seeing hers i could not resist because i love 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 the celtic knot work and cables that's always been something that i've been very attracted to as far as designs and patterns mm -hmm. and I am using Sweet Georgia Yarns. This is the Superwash DK in the Jasmine colorway and again it's not quite showing up true to color on the screen at least not from our perspective here but it's kind of a misty um, bluish green and it's a tonal so it ranges from a little bit darker to, um, I'm sorry. It's twice. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> At least this time it was, it was yarn, not a pen. All I can say is, gosh, Georgina. <laughs> I'm sorry, Asta. You can wear wooden pajamas. <laughs> With your prayers. With your prayers, of course, Georgina, of course. <laughs> Again, key and peel. <laughs> Watch it. It's so funny. Then you'll understand. <laughs> Except you won't understand wooden pajamas because we'll go into that later. <laughs> we will. Um, so anyway, this... So anyway, again, uh, Sweet Georgia, Jasmine colorway. I can show you the world. Jasmine. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Can resist. Nope. <laughs> but I... Absolutely Shining, shivering, <laughs> splendid. Hide <laughs> of professionalism. I'm done. Sorry. You can keep talking. I'm done. I'm sorry. Oh, that, that, that's all I've got. Tell me, princess, now when did you last let your heart decide? Okay, I'm good. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Now, All right. With number two. My only or, other whip. My only other whip. Is... I'm trying really hard to not sing the rest of the song. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> this is Candy Coated Yarn, which is by Crafty Mama Designs on Instagram. 
and this is her Christmas tree colorway from Christmas two years ago. So pretty, you guys. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's got, it's a full cheek rub status. And this is the sock head cowl <coughs> by Kelly McClure. And I have <coughs> Duchess Cara oh. is my little stitch marker beginning around. Hello, Dikua. Hello, Dikua. <laughs> So I feel like now I have to explain where this is coming from. And what it is, is I am a person that in a car on a trip with other people will say, look at the cows or, or look at the horses. And I felt like here, they always looked more lonely than in, in the States. I don't know why. I just made felt like these were lonely cows and horses and so I started the thing of always saying hello to them when I passed by and I also when I was learning the words for German animals um, I was trying really hard to memorize a lot of vocabulary and so a lot of times I use a mnemonic device mm -hmm. to help me remember and so I associated an action with the word and I was at my friend Logan's house and she had this baby sign language on for her daughter, uh, who I call Bean. And they were going over animals that day. <laughs> and so this is the American sign for cow. And this is the sign for hmm. horse. And since I'm a lefty, I use this in my dominant hand. And that. So it's hello dikua, which is the plural of cow. Mm -hmm. I don't know if di der or das is correct, there's no rhyme or reason to it in German that I can understand or find. So, hello, die Kuh. Hello, das Pferd. Das Pferd. All right. What's your last Sorry. Water break. Water. <coughs> Still getting over my cold. We're both. Yeah. <coughs> We're both still sickly people. But we wanted to get this in before she goes home. All right, my other whip, it's just the bare start of it, but I am working on the Anna Baltzer Wings of Peace shawl, and it's constructed. <coughs> it's constructed top down, and you can start to see the lace. There we go. <laughs> and... <coughs> The yarn I'm using is Brew City Yarn Co. in their MC and Cordial Base, which is a fingering, and it's um, merino, cashmere, and nylon. It's so squishy. And the colorway, again, is not coming true to color. The colorway is called Hummingbird. And again, we'll post pictures either at the end or sometime in the middle of the episode. So we'll, we'll figure it out, but you'll get to see how absolutely stunning it is. It's gorgeous. It, it really truly is. And this is one that I saw at Yarning For You, which is my local yarn store. And, um, <clears throat> and I saw it in the skein and I fell head over heels in love. And I'm like, I know that I have to get this. I know it's going to be a shawl. I know I want it to be something that resembled feathers or a bird's wing because it reminded me of all the birds that I saw in college when I took my ornithology class. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Meant early morning, sometimes just before dawn. But oh, so much fun. So it brings back brings back a lot of memories. Hummingbirds are one of my favorites to see. This is why you're a bird expert. <laughs> We've teased her, my husband and I, that she's a bird expert, a plant expert, an animal expert. She's an everything expert, tea expert, coffee expert. You name it, she's the expert. It's that simple. Is that all of our whips? Yep. All right. Well, then we're going to take another technical difficulty break to make sure that everything's saved. Exactly. And, and we'll come back to you.
Welcome back. Hello again. As if y'all have gone anywhere since we've been I know, here. right? But it is time for some stash enhancement. Which technically we should not be having. I know. We were bad. We were so bad. Very, very bad. <laughs> very, very, very <laughs> bad. Bad. So bad. <laughs> but it's pretty. But we loved it. It was a special occasion, so yes. we decided why not treat ourselves. Exactly. And we'll use it. I mean, what's the point of getting it if you're not going to use it? Exactly. So I already actually have plans for most of the stuff that I bought. Not everything, but most of it. Ta-da! So you get to go first because you have more than I do. All right. So I have it in my new Germany bag. This was part of an early birthday gift from that's me and let's see should i go for everything now i think doesn't yeah, I think hurt it so. doesn't hurt so this is a bag that she got me as a commemoration of my trip here and it has all kinds of classic german things starting with the verst sausage the verst the worst is the best. No, the worst is the worst. <laughs> Knee slapper. Have a stein or a beer stein. Yeah. Neuschwanstein. Neuschwanstein Castle, mm -hmm. which was something that we had planned on doing. Um, we still have plans for other destinations in the few days that I have left here. Yes. But um, this is not one of them. This, it was in the early stages of planning, but then fortunately we found out before I arrived that all the pretty parts are going to be up in scaffolding. So what's the point? Yeah. So, I mean, for those who don't know, uh, Neuschwanstein is the Disney castle. Um, he, there's only like six or seven rooms in the castle that were ever completed. And also this beautiful red part right here is in scaffolding. But of those rooms, they're refurbishing two or three of them right now. So you can't even really see much of anything in them. So, And it's a very long drive from even other destinations. Yeah. So to go all that way just to see the exterior and turn around is... A little crazy a little bit of a little bit of a waste i hate to say it but it is what it is next time next time but we will be seeing other fairy tale castles yes in a monastery i'm very excited for that yes and then we have the brandenburg gates that is in berlin mm -hmm. we have a cute little girl in her dirndl mm-hmm we have an alpine hat, mm -hmm. pretzel, and then I think you've got the story on the uh, tents and the Ferris wheel. The tents are pretty much you find them at Oktoberfest or you'll find them during Fashing, which is like Carnival or uh, Mardi Gras in the States. But for Fashing takes months, whereas Mardi Gras is... One day. One night a year. Yeah. So that's pretty much carnivals are a normal thing. It's actually called Carnaval. Um, Carnavale in uh, Cologne. It's just foshing for us Bayern people. It's Bayerisch. <laughs> which is its own dialect of German. For those who don't know. All right. So we did go yarn shopping while we were here. While I was here, of mm -hmm. course. Duh. And I actually got this the first night out because we went to Etika, the local grocery store, and they sell Regia, another skein of the Fiafatic mm -hmm. before ply. And Faba is the color. Okay, so if you're interested in the colorway number, again, they don't have names, 
but this is 03732. Beautiful. And I ended up getting two of these. They're gonna be a pair of socks for myself and then a pair for my maternal grandmother this time, Grandma Mary. Yes. And I have a skein of Regia Premium in the Merino Yak. Oh, so beautiful. And it's like a tealy, sapphire-y color um, with little bits of heathering. And so there's little bits of brown from the yak. So beautiful. Very excited about it. This is color 7515. <clears throat> I'm very excited about it. It has a crown because it's a princess. Of course. Like me. My husband calls me princess because I am one. It even says so on the inside of my engagement ring. <laughs> that that's just for the proof that I'm a princess. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Next. Next. So we each got a skein of this in different colors. Yes. And this is a German brand. Brochbatz. Wollmeise. Brochbatz und Wollmeise. Und Wollmeise. Gotta get the and in there. Oh yeah. No. Not bad for my for my pronunciation. Yep. And we got these in Dresden. Mm -hmm. And she and she got the previous yarn in Dresden as well. Yes. So mine is the Nordish colorway. Mm -hmm. And it's a hundred percent wool. And your colorway is Mine is the Lavendel, which is lavender. It's a tonally purple. And this is lace weight, you guys. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of yardage. Do you see how big these skeins are? These That's... are 300 grams each. Yes. And per 100 grams, there is 525 meters or 574 yards. Yes. So you could whack somebody with this. Mm -hmm. Don't you hit me. <laughs> no, I was going to start. <laughs> that way we're going to start fight. <laughs> Because we're professionals. We're adults. <laughs> we're adults. Might not look like it, but we are. Height of professionalism. Height of professional. <laughs> Professionality is important. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not a word. We're adults. We promise. Adults. <laughs> we promise. What can we say? They bring up the kid in us. Yep. And my husband trying to call. Oh boy. Oh well. Let's go finish. And I'll call yep. him back. And I promise I'm a good wife. Also in Dresden. Oh. Oh, also in Dresden. This is what else I got. So the shop owner was amazing. Very sweet. And her English was very Wonderful. good. Wonderful. And I had purchased that yarn and a set of needles. And she threw in this beautiful pattern. This is the Westminster Wrap. And I haven't looked to see if it's on Ravelry yet, but definitely see if you can find it because it's absolutely beautiful. It has cables and... I'm gonna get it. It's gorgeous. <laughs> it is. And then what else did you get in Dresden? The last thing I got in Dresden, actually not the last thing I got in Dresden, but a thing I got in Dresden is I got Juniper Moon Dromedary. So pretty. Which is, in case you guys don't know, Dromedary is a word. It's kind of camel. Mm hmm That describes how many humps they have. And uh, Dromedary is one hump. Bactrian mm -hmm. has two. Yes. Ask the animal expert. She always knows. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is 70% wool and 30% baby camel, which is why it's called dromedary. This is the Misty Lake colorway, and it's kind of a taupey gray. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's a DK weight, and it's squishy. I got three skeins of it. And it's going to be a gorgeous shawl. Mm -hmm. I can't decide between the Paris Toujours. Or the um, campsite. 
by Alicia Plummer. But I'll be figuring that out in the near future. Mm -hmm. And then I have one last thing from Dresden, which is Wurkenspiel, which is a fingering white yarn. This is the Provence colorway. And it's like a burgundy color with gray. It dips into Merlot, fuchsia, plum. Mm -hmm. It's just it's stunning. So pretty. I think my husband's at the door. Possibly. I know I saw something. So. And then, so Dresden was the day before yesterday. Yes. And we let him in while. All right. She talks. So yesterday we went to Umberg, cute little town. And we went to, surprise, surprise, another yarn shop. And I found this beautiful gradient. This is McLana. And I can't determine how to pronounce the rest of it. Um, I could give it my best shot. But anyway, d again, it doesn't have a colorway name, but the number, if you're interested in, is 9118. And if you're interested, we have the label. <coughs> Excuse me for turns. <coughs> And I got, I ended up getting two of these, but um, I chose one graded one way and the other graded the other. So the other skein is exactly the same, except the way it's wound, it has the light in the center and goes to dark on the outside. <coughs> I also have from that same yarn store, I normally do not buy singles. Eric, say hi. You're in the podcast. <laughs> I warned him. He apparently did not listen. <laughs> I typically do not buy singles, but this color was so beautiful. I bought it because it needs to be a magpie tendency. This is the Drakenbola yarn. It does not have a colorway name as far as I know, but stunning. It's so pretty. It's reds and pink. It's not quite red, but there are small bits of it and pinks and there's a little bit of coral and white and it looks like gray and it's just <sighs> gorgeousness. It's so beautiful. And she's a local indie dyer. So, I mean, I think it's pretty special because mm -hmm. it's in my own local yarn store. So, yay. Yay. And then, sorry, you're good. Do you want to go with your next? Sure. I'm going to do kind of three in one because they're all the same brand but different colorways. So, this was... Another part of these were the goodies in these were some of the goodies inside the bag, and I'll let her go next in that before I share the last one. But like what you gave me, Arkansas Yarn Co. I have always loved I've loved their yarn since watching her podcast, and but I just never really had a chance to purchase. So she surprised me with. Mm -hmm. Some kind of Christmassy minis, because that's mm -hmm. the last time we saw each other. Mm -hmm. So I have Cindy Lou Who with pink pajamas mm -hmm. as the contrasting slash coordinating heel. I have the Grinch with so shabby the Grinch, Santa. the shabby Santa suit. Mm-hmm. 
and sparkling on the naughty list again with shabby santa suit mm -hmm. and all three skeins including the minis are sparkles sparkles the sparkles fix everything sparkles make everything better they do they do my next acquisition it apparently it's not a pod it's not a podcast if I don't include some Golden Pearls yarn that I've purchased. So, from the Golden Pearls, I have Dateless Daughter, which is kind of denim-y with pops of yellow and purple and gray. Dorothy colors. Very much Dorothy because she is the Dateless Daughter. And this is going to be yet another magpie tendency. If you guys can't tell... I really love that sweater, and I want to make 20 bajillion of them. <laughs> Super cute. Because, well, to be fair, you guys, I am so grateful to Melissa Loomis for designing this because she's opened a whole new world of sweaters to plus-size women that can only afford two skeins of any dyed yarn at a time. So it's kind of a big thing, so I'm very excited to make it and support her. Mm -hmm. They're pretty! So pretty! And you will get to see the uh, photos that we took for for that top and at the end. At the end. Because we had a photo shoot while we, we were did. in Dresden and we had one while mm -hmm. we were in Amberg. Yes. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And she's actually a really good photographer too. So not the best, but I have fun doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's what matters. Yep. All, All right. right. And then the last one for me. So part three of the entire gift, part two of the contents of the bag. Da, 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 we have da, Desert da, da, Vista Dye Works in the I Love Lucy colorway. And it's the Zien base, so it sparkles. It has the contrasting heel. Or the contrasting mini for heels, toes, and cuffs. And oh my gosh, those colors. Very Lucille Ball, very I Love Lucy. And since it is a little bit harder to see, actually, you can kind of see it okay. Um, but it has red, blue, white, and kind of a lilac purple. So very pretty. And Again, Desert Vista Dye Works is a brand that is kind of on my bucket list for uh, for purchasing. And mm -hmm. I had my star and my very first DVD. Yay! And then we're going to put a pause in here. Mm -hmm. And we will talk about the rest later. All right. See ya. Hold, Hold up. up. Wait a minute. Put some more yarn in it. Hello, everybody. Hello. We're back. It's been two days for us. It's been two seconds for you. Mm -hmm. uh, we took two days off because we went traveling. Mm -hmm. And we did. And we might have gotten a little bit more yarn. Yeah, just, just a skosh. So <laughs> it's actually kind of fitting that we stopped during the stash acquisition section because we have more acquisitions. We do. So first off. I have more to show, so I will go first. All right. I might have stopped by the Simply Serving uh, shop update a few weeks ago. And they might have come in the mail on Friday. Possibly. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So we have Christmas Naughty Sheep with the coal. It's so cute. And in his stocking. Mm -hmm. I, love, I love her cupcake ones. I think they're precious. It's really cute. I got her Christmas tree cookie, and it has sprinkles for the lights and ornaments. It's precious. It is. And then my favorite, because those two were on sale since we're a little out of season, mm -hmm. but this one was full price, which is fine because preciousness. It's so got a rubber cute. duck and bubbles. And all I can think of is... Rubber ducky, you're the one. Squeak, 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 squeak. You make bath time so much fun. And that's all I got of the song. 
<laughs> so I have those three new partners keepers. Adults. We are adults. <laughs> we promise. We are 26 <laughs> years old, not six. <laughs> okay. We clear? And I always get um, Simply Servings with the lobster class because it's multi functional. I can use it as a stitch marker. I can use it as a progress keeper. Uh, and I don't have to worry about the size of the needle. So mm -hmm. it's just, it does double duty when I need it to. It's very handy. handy that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then do you want to show, show one of the things you got? Yes. Yeah, so while we were away, we went to Munich or München. München, yeah. And how cute is this? This is the Lang brand Super Socks. So cute. And those colors. Oh my gosh. We saw them knit up in a in a sock swatch and at the store. And I went I saw the socks and I'm like, I have to have I have to get that yarn and you can see them knit up They're so in the cute. picture. And so I saw the finished object. I'm like I need that. And I went rummaging through the whole pile. She did. She said, help me find this. Yay. I need it. I'm so happy. I also bought some yarn while at that same store. But I actually, we went to Etika the day prior. And I got two skeins there. So I'm going to show these off first. I got Rainbow Tastic from Missy. Is this not Missy Tastic? It's all bright rainbows mm -hmm. and fantasticness. And it's the six fadig, uh, sex fadig. So uh, six ply yarn. So it's sort of like a sport weight sock, which is much needed here in the winters. Mm -hmm. And yeah. since my family and I are apparently going to Scandinavia for Christmas, I'm going to need some warmth. So DK weight socks are for me. DK and sport weight. And then this is the other color I got. Speaking of, this colorway is 6367. And this is 6368. And then did mine have a colorway number? Yes, it does. So if you like these, this is different brand, but yeah. same, same, same deal. It's the Lang Yarns. This is color, I just saw it. <laughs> there it is. Color 901.0211. Okay. Now show some of the fantastic things that you got that you made. Oh, yes. I'm so excited. These also do count as acquisitions. So while I was here, um, I knew Jess had Juggy, her wheel. He's behind me off screen. He's been fixed semi. We, some we figured out how to, how to get the flyer to spin. Yes. And have yarn collect onto the bobbin. So I've been a busy little bee and I made- She broke him again. She did it. <laughs> she did it. It's just something loose and we're going to fix it later. I promise. Anyway, <laughs> I didn't mean to. I didn't mean it just... to. <laughs> I was kidding y'all. Kidding. <laughs> kidding. But anyway, show. <laughs> so I got three skeins of yarn. So this is um, it's knit picks. Knit picks. This is the knit picks um, roving. roving I only sell one kind besides the silk hankies. Okay. So we have kind of an olive color. We'll have the. We'll have the exact names in the description. Yes. But it's kind of an olive, heathery green. Absolutely beautiful. Mm hmm We have, I remember this one, Rose Heather. Of course you remember, because Rose. Because we were, we were watching Doctor Who. Because she's my new Whovian. I am a new Whovian. I'm so excited. <laughs> and Merlot Heather. And at least on our site, it's coming out kind of dark, dark brown, almost black, but it's absolutely gorgeous. It's tethered with a little bit of green, a little bit of red. Absolutely beautiful. Stunning. Stunning. And it's gorgeous. It is. 
and again about 100 grams each so mm -hmm. I'm very excited this is my first wheel spun yarn yes and you did singles for these not I did plied. do singles we did not ply them um, and I think at some point we're gonna figure out the yardage but then again not really sure that it matters to me anyway whether I measure it out sooner rather than later. Yeah. Okay. Pretty sure I'm gonna do a shawl though. And then I have these two gorgeous skeins, well cakes. This is Twisted Summer Shades from Lana Grossa. And it is 100% cotton. Yes. In color 1001. This is what it looks so like. Pretty. It's a little gradient. And it is one of the very popular, as you saw earlier. It's a German four ply that you apply the twist yourself. So actually, this one, I take it back. It's not on yeah, this that one. Is, some of them were, some of it's them a little some of them were already twisted, I noticed. Yes. This one's already twisted. It's my other one that's not, I think. Yeah, this one's a little looser if it is. Because professional, I should have looked at this beforehand. I think that one's twisted as well. Yeah, it's just a little... A little, a little loose. looser, I'd say. And, you um, guys will see in a moment. Yeah. And the nice thing is that Lana Grossa, when they have these cakes, they attach a button. as So you know that where the start pool is, so you don't have yarn barf. I just love have to that. For that. I hate gutting skeins. I don't mind it, actually. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, it's kind of fun, but sometimes when it, if it's like a really huge pile, it's I just hard to, sometimes it tangles pretty easily. I love yarn barf. And let me tell you why, before everyone goes, you're insane, Jessica. <laughs> I love yarn barf because it gives me measurable progress. Without having oh, to sit good and point. wait. Because I can go, ooh, look at all this yarn barf. And then 10 minutes later, 20 minutes, an hour, I can go, hey, it's almost gone. So sometimes, especially like when you're in the slog of like a sweater and you have miles of stockinette ahead of you, I will actually purposefully pull out a bunch and I'll say, okay, I'm not getting up from this seat. I'm not going to be done for the day until the yarn barf on the floor isn't mm. it up. So it kind of, it lets you see it there when you can't see it in your project. Nice. So that's kind of why I like it. <laughs> and this is the other, the final acquisition it is a Twisted Cash Merino from Lana Grossa. This is... 90% wool, 10% cashmere, and it is color 803, and so it is just pretty beautiful. This is coming up a little, like, lavender-y. It's not. It's like a very pale sky or country blue. It's kind of the color of your rouge spots, I mm. think. Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. And, I would say so. And... <laughs> Um, both of these, I apparently am going to have 20 bajillion magpie tendencies <laughs> <laughs> because I love the pattern so much. You've seen three different quantities of yarn I've purchased for them in one episode. <coughs> so <clears throat> that's it for acquisitions. Hooray. Although we, did we show off the dyed yarn? Yes. I think, okay. We did. So if you're if you're watching this, like you're probably like, yes, you already did. Get on with yeah. it. It was two days ago. Yeah. It was. So it's been a while. Everything's kind of a blur. Yep. It's finally dry, you guys. <laughs> nice. It's been sitting here on the knitting nitty for two days. Let me just go ahead and I'll scan it up while we talk. Sounds like a good idea. So while we're talking, let's discuss all the places you've been. Yep. Because it's been a busy two weeks. It's been a really busy two weeks. Holy crap. I'm and, exhausted. And I fly home tomorrow, which is kind of a sad thing to think about. It is. It makes me sad. You're not allowed to leave. Oh, darn. 
I deny your ability to leave and go back to sunny Calif- California. <laughs> Someone is not used to the cold. No. <laughs> because California, while it does get colder than what people think, <clears throat> it's still not cold. Mm-hmm. Not Germany cold. No, not Germany cold. And I've been fighting off this bug, so everything is just... Mm-hmm. Like the... Ex- not even extremes, but you know what I mean. so pretty. It Sorry. is so pretty. Sorry. But everything just, just feels mm-hmm. more intense than it normally would yeah. for me. And acclimatizing is always really hard, too, especially in one of the more extreme months that we have. Mm-hmm. So where all have we been? We have been to Bratislava. We've been to Hungary. We've been to um, oh, Bratislava, Czech Republic. Slovakia. So rewind <laughs> okay, in we're order. Go first. Rewind in order. We went to Prague, Czech Republic. We went to Bratislava, um, Slovakia. We went to Hung or Budapest, Hungary. Mm-hmm. We went to Vienna, Austria. Uh huh. And then we had a couple of days at home to relax. Then we went to And recover. And recover, yes. Um we were supposed to go to Munich. But then we got we, sick. I got, got sick. Mm-hmm. I think I gave it to her, unfortunately, she which no one one gets it. They all, everybody ends up getting it sooner or later. But it's okay because we still got to go. We still got to go. Just delayed. Just delayed. And where did we go on Wednesday? Wednesday we went to um, Dresden, mm-hmm. and we did our photo shoot. There we did do our for my shoot. magpie. Mm-hmm. And then we went to Hamburg and mm-hmm. did the photo shoot for my Luella top. Mm-hmm. And my Bridget hat. Yes. Which was just very many. It was like four pictures. And all. I'll be right back. I just I just have to show you guys because in the span of the couple of days, I've made some progress of mine. So I'll be right back. We have made progress. I will show you. I had just started this sock the other day. <laughs> I just bound it off today, and I've already cast on my toe of number two. Okay. And look at all these cables. Oh, I'm so, so pretty. excited. I'm so excited. No kidding. And working so often, you know, I don't normally have time to make, to really make that kind of headway in such a short amount of time. And it's grown. It has crazy i might be able to finish it on the plane you might that'd be whoo that's ambitious <laughs> ambitious i would not be brave enough to do cables on a plane especially ones that are changing so constantly mm-hmm. maybe if it was like the antler hat by tin can knits because it's just the same cable over and over so you can stick your cable needle through one of them and not worry <laughs> but it's a little harder on this, on the Bridget. A little bit, but not by much. Don't don't let that intimidate you. It's no. it's a fun project. It is absolutely wonderful. I love my finished project. I did say on a previous podcast that I hated knitting it, and it wasn't that I hated knitting it. I love cables and I love knitting. It's just one where I had to pay more attention than normal. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. So um, and just kind of, and I find even though. You know, even if you don't necessarily enjoy reading charts, you can at least follow along to see where those changes because where those changes are, mm-hmm. because sometimes cables will start from a place where there hasn't been or just kind of disappear, and then you start a new one. Mm-hmm. So you, it's just a matter of figuring out where those are before you go. Like, wait. I was supposed to do this. Why why am I doing that instead of this? Mm. So there you go. And also for information purposes, the Bridget pattern is a a free one that you Mm -hmm. can find. It's online. And it is both written directions and charted. Exactly. And we apologize. My husband is working a work emergency in the background. Mm -hmm. So he he can't sit still. It's an issue. 
and that's so. part of that's part of being in the army too. Yep, it's unavoidable. Normally, when I record, he's at work, so there isn't an issue with it. But uh, he's home on leave for two weeks, so his leave ends tomorrow. <laughs> mm-hmm. But besides the point, besides that, anyway, we've been on. traveling everywhere. We have. So tell me, Alex. What was your favorite place that we visited? Oh, I'd say one of my favorite places was Vienna. However, I don't think we really spent enough time there. It was just 12 hours. A good portion of that was on on the tour. And we did have a fun excursion. We did the time travel Vienna. If you're ever in Vienna, you guys, well worth it. It is 15 euro. Mm-hmm. And it's a 5D experience. Um, it translates into hundreds of languages simultaneously, so you don't have to worry about a language barrier. Mm-hmm. It has a, um, you get an audio headset. Mm-hmm. And the second they start talking, you hear them talking in your head, so it's not mm-hmm. an issue. Um, it was just so unique. It gives a lot, a little bit of uh, Austrian history. It gives a little bit of an overview of some of the famous people from the area. Mm-hmm. And it was just and so a, cool. And even a little bit of what hap- what was happening in the world at that time. Yes. Cause, so it puts everything in perspective, mm-hmm. especially um, when it addresses war- the Second World War, First World War, things like that. Yes. And <clears throat> we originally, it was a, added as an optional excursion on the guided tour that we were on. Mm-hmm. And when we first read about it being an option, we were like, no. You're we like, eh, meh, it's all right. It sounds okay, but since we have such limited time, wouldn't we rather be touring and seeing things on our own? Mm-hmm. But then we heard our tour guide, Monica, we love her. Oh, she was awesome. My husband and I have had her for multiple trips. We love Monica. Uh, She was telling us a bit more about it than what was in the little blurb online. And we said, you know what? That does sound fun. Mm -hmm. And so we did it. Everyone that went raved about it. And we told everybody that chose to not go that they missed out. Mm -hmm. Because it was so good. Uh, So that was our brief stint in Vienna. That was... I also really liked... um, I also really liked Prague. Prague was cool. Prague is wonderful. Um, What was your favorite part in Vienna, though? I'm curious. My favorite part, I think, was... um, Seeing seeing all the historical palaces, the Habsburg, Mm -hmm. that the Habsburgs inhabited. Mm -hmm. And that was a long reigning dynasty, so... Very powerful. That being very powerful, long reigning. Um, so that being said, they're gonna have a lot of palaces. They're gonna have a lot of monuments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, they were ruling the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and mm-hmm. it was just it was actually part of my favorite part too. But uh, my other favorite part of of Vienna was in the Imperial Palace. We discussed yes. the balcony. Yes. You saw it on my Instagram, most likely. Mm -hmm. You've seen it on her page. This balcony on the Imperial Palace was where Hitler gave the speech about the Anschluss, the annexation of Austria. And he's such an evil person. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you're witnessing a piece of history that's still in existence. Mm -hmm. And I think that's beyond cool. And you can look at the balcony where he. Sorry, didn't cover your face. You can look at the balcony where he spoke. Mm-hmm. Turn ninety degrees to your left, and you're staring at the wing where Marie Antoinette grew up. Mm-hmm. And so I like Marie Antoinette. <laughs> full of history. I mean, just full. Everywhere. Full doesn't even begin to describe it. Yeah, it was just overwhelming history. You couldn't walk down the street in the city center without something important have happened there. Mm -hmm. That was really cool. Loved that. Really cool. And what did you like about Prague? I 
I liked everything about Prague. It, it's a really cool city. It's so cool. Um, not the museum. The <laughs> We're not going to go into detail oh, about God. the museum, but not the museum. Long it's story. an adult museum. That is what we're going to and leave we it did at. Not, we did not go in. We did not go in. It's <laughs> But we happened to walk past. Yes, it's very similar to the... Uh, it's actually owned by the same museum that I visited oh, really? in Barcelona. Oh, really? Yes. It's the same company. Same company that I visited in Barcelona. So if you guys have been faithful followers of my podcast, you know what I'm talking about. Oh. But um, this one is about the history of machines used for that activity. And there is a machine being demonstrated in the front lobby for everyone in the town that's walking by to see. <laughs> everyone in the town. It don't matter if you're a kid or not, you can see it. Not with a live person. It's not being demonstrated with a live person. It's being demonstrated with, ma- with a mannequin. <laughs> I'm going to put that out there now. But still, shocking if you're not used to it. Because Europe is very open in these things whereas i tend to think america's a little bit puritanical in that in that sense. i would i would say so we're very prudish mm-hmm. not a thing here when we were in munich we did not see it but there is a nude beach uh, <laughs> and there are magazines that are not blacked out like they are in the states <laughs> that you can find at gas stations you just pass by and boom body parts that are normally covered. So, mm-hmm. for information's sake, think I am thankful that I did not see that, and we didn't scout them out either. But no. and see, we don't. My husband and I, we don't even see it anymore because we are so used to it. Mm-hmm. It's not something you can still be like, "Whoa!" <laughs> when you pass something and you're not expecting and, it to be there. Mm-hmm. And but, you too. And. Once you get used to it, um, you do kind of still get a little bit of a chuckle out of it, but that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, should we go over one of the things that we liked in each city that we went? Sure. Okay. Um, Prague. My winner is the chimney cake. Every mm-hmm. time. Hands down. Mm-hmm. Your favorite thing in Prague. Are we talking food or just thing in general? It can be in general. It can be food. Doesn't matter. Um, I really liked seeing the um, uh, St. Vitus Cathedral and the astronomical clock. That was really cool. Those are really cool. And how intricate, the intricate workings of that clock that must be required to make it run. I mean, keep, yeah. And keep in mind, this was before electricity. This was before modern technology. Mm-hmm. So it's an ancient clock. It's from medieval times. Mm-hmm. So it's really cool to see that they have maintained it to make mm-hmm. sure that it still works to this day. It's still not powered by electricity or anything. It's just kept up manually. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. All right. So Prague, Bratislava. Bratislava, I liked seeing the chocolate, the chocolate shop. Yes. Because I think they do, I think the company that runs the shop does their chocolate bean to bar and they've won, I can't remember exactly what the award is, but it's, it's a like. Great Taste. Great Taste Award. Of London. I think so. But it, either way, it's like the Academy Award for chocolate. Mm-hmm. And so that was won since 2014. I think so. Mm-hmm. Also, let us add, we were crazy. Um, we got home from Prague at like four o'clock in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. At nine o'clock that night, we were on a bus, or we were on our way to catch the bus to go to Bratislava. Mm-hmm. We were crazy and we were tired, which mm-hmm. is probably why we both got sick on that trip because it has just been just nonstop. Yeah. My favorite thing in Bratislava. The peeper. Oh yes! Uh, it's oh, a statue. Oh, the peeper and there's so there's there are actually two statues. Mm-hmm. This is this is another thing that I liked about Prague. So there are two statues. One of them is the greeter, and kind of the backstory is 
you know, he was, he was an orphan, um, kind of grew up very poor, but he would greet, he would greet everybody and he would greet the females by saying, good morning, beautiful lady. Mm -hmm. And so we got a picture of, we got a picture of him with me. And you were in the picture too. Yes. He said, he, was, he, was he said, hello, beautiful lady to me. Mm -hmm. And then there's the paper. <laughs> there's the paper. You will also see a picture of him. And it's not a traditional statue where he's all above ground. He, this statue is literally a pothole, a manhole. And you see his elbows up. Mm -hmm. And he's got kind of like a... Um, he's got a bald patch. I was actually going to say it's kind of like a, um, like a Sherlock Holmes type hat but without the without the brim in the back mm -hmm. it's got the short little brim on up front but you'll you'll see the picture you'll see the picture it's and also you... very shiny there mm -hmm. I'll, I'll explain why in a second and there's a sign that says caution man working his this statue's job is he looks up women's skirts <laughs> and the city celebrates it <laughs> but uh, it said that uh, if you go rub the peeper's head, you're going to have good luck and good fortune in your life. Uh, however, if you rub his nose, you will have more children. So when my husband decided to take a picture with him, I said, you'd better be very careful with where you choose to touch this statue. It had better not be his nose. Please and thanks. Mm -hmm. So that was the peeper. I enjoyed it. He did touch the head. Just clearing that up. There is no room. There will be no babies in this factory anytime soon. <laughs> Next city. Uh, Hungary. Budapest. Budapest. Yes. Budapest was absolutely beautiful. Um, I think my favorite um, part of that tour was the excursion that we did. And we... And there was a one hour river cruise up, up and down the Danube and mm -hmm. you got to see everything lit up at night. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I also really liked the tour that we did the next day. Um, unfortunately, someone wasn't feeling too well. So I asked the, I asked our local guide, hey, you know, when, when we're doing the tours at each stop, would you mind if I just videotape? It's not going to be published on social media. It's just for a part of our party that was supposed to be with us, but got sick and is at home or at the hotel. Anyway. I was at the hotel all day. I didn't leave the hotel. Not once. I wasn't risking it because I wanted to be good for Vienna. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite part was the river cruise as well. And then I also really enjoyed the langosh, which is oh, um, yes. plate bread. And it's it's bread that's fried, and then they put sour cream, cheese, and whatever other toppings mm -hmm. that you would like on there. I just had mine with garlic and cheese because it was delicious. I had, I had mine with... Uh, <laughs> I You've had heard my dork. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I had mine with um, garlic, sour cream, and cheese. Um, I would have had more, but it was a Friday. <coughs> it was a Friday during Lent, so um, the other options were meat combined with vegetables. There wasn't really an option you didn't have just veggies, but it was good. Yeah, it was, it was definitely so very good. good, and it was very heavy. Um, oh my gosh, it was incredibly heavy. Yeah, I mean, it's worth it. You look at it and you're like, oh, no way is that going to fill me up. It filled me up. I could not finish it. So that's going to say something because I can put away some food. <laughs> and they also, they had chimney cakes there too. But um, Oh my gosh, the size of those things. They're enormous. Holy they're, crackers. They're bigger than the size of your head. They're like the size of Alex's and I's head. Stacked on top of each other is one chimney cake. They're that big. Enormous. It was insane. And then they had an Easter market going there. They did. That was so, so fun. That was your first Easter market. 
it was kind of my first and only Easter market, but it was still, it was still so cool. I loved it. Well, to be fair, I mean, we saw them set up for the one we, in Prague. We did. And we passed by an open one in Vienna. But that was the only one that I actually shopped yes. at. But it was still really yes. cool. I got a little painted um, kind of ceramic-y egg. They had, they had um, the traditional eggs that are real eggs. And so what you do is you take an egg you take a pin and you very carefully poke a hole in both ends. And I know this because my mom did this. I've done it too. And really it's, hard. Oh my gosh, it's incredibly hard. But you essentially blow the egg white and the yolk out and mm -hmm. hollow, hollow the thing out. And then from that point, they're very carefully hand carved. It's incredible. I would like to have gotten one of those. However, I'm just not sure it would have made the journey back. So I got a pretty hand painted one and it says where I got it. So you also got the music box. And I did get a music box. And a necklace. And a necklace. And I also got a music box and necklace. I have the real egg so so I didn't need one of them. Mm -hmm. We already covered Vienna. We did cover Vienna. So the next place was all in Germany, so Dresden. Dresden, Dresden was beautiful. Um, we went to, what was the name of the first? Holy Cross, I believe. Mm -hmm. Holy Cross Church. And, um, and Eric and I went up to the top, um, to the bell tower. And mm -hmm. yeah, she just stayed behind. Don't Heights aren't. Heights aren't her thing. Nope. Um, now there are all those stairs. <laughs> but the view was incredible. Absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite part of Dresden is always, every time I go, <laughs> I giggle because the residence palace is connected to the five-star hotel. Oh, Yes. And it was not always the five-star hotel because it doesn't make sense for a king and his family to be connected to a hotel. Uh, it was connected by a elevated passageway that's covered. Sort of like when you're at an airport and you have to switch from terminals. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one of those from medieval times. And it was connected to the mistress's house. Mm -hmm. And it makes me laugh because anytime you go on a guided tour, they're just like, Oh, yeah, see how close he built his house to the mistress's house to the palace. No one ever discusses the passageway so that he could go back and forth with no one noticing. Mm-hmm. So it's my favorite part of the city the entire time, uh, every single time we go. And that's where we saw that awesome, awesome yarn shop. Mm -hmm. um, I also love about the city. It's my favorite city to go to in Germany absolutely love going it's not where it's a day trip place for the most part because i mean you can see all of the historic center it's within a three four block radius mm -hmm. so it's very small but it looks ancient but it's not because everything had to be rebuilt after world war ii and after the cold war was over so it all looks old because it's black and it's just uh, manganese or magnesium in the Stone itself, it's a limestone sandstone mix. And so the oxidation makes it turn black, so it looks ancient when it's not. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my favorite thing about Dresden. And then we went to Amberg. We did go to Amberg. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I also love Dresden has a eunuch wall. Oh, yes. This is going to make us sound, me sound very snobby. And very uptight and American. I promise I'm not. But uh, one of our tours, the, when I went with my mother, the person giving the tour, the guy had a very, very thick German accent, which you would expect because we're in Germany. Um, however, the it, however, her accent was so thick, it was almost... I'm used to hearing their accents on an everyday basis, and I can typically decipher what's being said. It sounded like she was speaking Greek, was how thick this accent was. 
and she said that we were going to go see a very unique wall in the city. I had already taken this tour once before, and I was like, there's not a unique wall here. I mean, what do you put on this wall? Do you just line the eunuchs of the town up in a row? Uh, do you hang the parts that have been mutilated on the wall? What is a eunuch wall? And then <laughs> she walked us there and we're like, this isn't eunuchs. There's nothing to do with eunuchs on it. It is a unique wall. And so now every time we see something that's a little different, we go, oh, look, that, like a pigeon. I always take pi pictures of pigeons for my friend Mallory. And I'll be like, oh, look at the, un the eunuch colored pigeon. So <laughs> that's my other favorite part of Dresden. I love the eunuch wall, which is just the, the, process, the procession of princes mm -hmm. of the town. It's just all in tile. It's really pretty. You'll see a picture later. You'll know it. It's yellow and black and white. And funny thing is, it's made of porcelain, mm -hmm. which is the town's sort of specialty uh, specialty craft. Mm -hmm. They have their own uh, brand. It's called Meissen, and uh, it has two crossed key, crossed swords, not crossed keys. That's the Vatican. That's mm -hmm. the Holy See. <laughs> it's got two crossed swords, and that's how you know it's authentic and from Dresden. It's very expensive. But it's very pretty, too. Mm -hmm. All right, that's Dresden. Now we go back to Omberg. Omberg. Omberg was absolutely beautiful, and it's only 20 minutes away. Mm -hmm. So from, from my perspective, that would be, that's shorter than a trip to work. So very close. And we just kind of walked around the whole town. Um, we saw one of the churches. Mm -hmm. Very pretty. Mm -hmm. um, and we did some yarn shopping as well. That's where mm -hmm. that's where I got the gradients. And that's where my Drachenvola came from. And the oops. chocolate store. Oh, yes. We stopped by a chocolate shop. It and good. it was good. We got some truffles. Um, there... If it hadn't been so close to dinner, they had this beautiful, or a couple of beautiful cakes. Um, the one that kind of caught my eye was like a vanilla cake and it had fre slices of fresh strawberries mm -hmm. and fresh kiwi. There was a chocolate, I think there might have even have been a uh, chocolate one with just strawberries. They're all wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite part of Omberg is, I love everything about Omberg. We go there quite frequently. Um, that used to house our favorite restaurant. However, that restaurant has since closed because of construction. Um, hmm. I always enjoy seeing the church. I don't always go inside, but I always think it's the most beautiful view in the town. So I make sure I take a picture of it every time I go. Mm -hmm. And I also just really enjoy uh, stopping by Nanu Nana, which is... Oh, yes. <laughs> it's a store. It's like a Ross, I guess, without clothes is the closest thing I can describe it as. Kind of... <sighs> or a home goods, maybe. A little bit. Yeah. Marshall's. Kind it, of... You don't go there... With something specific in mind. They have kind of um, novelty. Yeah. Novelty home stuff. Tchotchkes. Mm -hmm. um, party supplies. <laughs> oh, the party supplies. <laughs> <laughs> they have lollipops in the shapes of body parts. Mm -hmm. uh, they have... They have some naughty things. Let's yeah. just put it at that. We'll leave and it there. some... They have naughty and nice, so yes. something for everybody. There is something for... I mean, I think those lollipops are located near the Easter section, which has, like, coloring books for kids. <laughs> and uh, toy, toy einhorn. Oh, I just forgot the English word for einhorn. Unicorn. Thank you. <laughs> einhorn. One horn. Unicorn. <laughs> so, uh, I mean... 
It just has a little bit of everything. You don't go in there looking for something specific. You just go in and unless you're like, okay, so I gotta get a gag gift for so and so. Spencer's kind of. A little bit. Spencer's is known for gag gifts. I don't know if they still even exist anymore. I think so. It's been a while. <laughs> but you go there and you just let it find you, mm-hmm. kind of. <laughs> but uh, that's Omberg. I love stopping in Nanu Nana. Uh, they have amazing gelato shops. And mm. um, the yarn store is pretty nice, too. Uh, and then we went to München yesterday. We did. And we went to Dachau. Yes, on the way to München, we went to we went to Dachau, Dachau, and it was a very sobering experience, but one that is well worth well worth the journey. Mm-hmm. And because it is a memorial site, they don't charge admission. They do have um, a spot for where you pay three euro for parking, but that's, and then you can pay for a guided tour, but that's mm-hmm. about it. And mm-hmm. even then, those funds go to keeping the memorial site running, mm-hmm. so others can visit it. Yeah, it's but otherwise non-profit. it is, mm-hmm. but otherwise it is free admission. Mm-hmm. You can walk the grounds. Uh, you can read all. The, there's plenty of information you can glean just from. There's a bunch of plaques in one of the rooms, and it'll go over most of their history. Um, some of the things are easily inferred what they are, what they were used for. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very. It's the third time my husband and I have gone, and every time it's hard to go, but it's important to go. It is. It was very important. And our tour guide was wonderful. He was. He really was. He was funny while being respectful. Mm -hmm. Very very appropriate use of humor. Yes. And made sure that none of us were upset or disturbed or anything. Mm -hmm. There were some children... There were there was a family with children on our tour, and you know when during the times where he would go, where we where he would say, okay, you have five or ten minutes to look around and read the descriptions, just kind of take everything in. Mm-hmm. He, would, you know, he was very discreet about saying, hey, you know, we're gonna do we're gonna do this next. You know, as a parent, are you comfortable with your children seeing this Mm -hmm. you can feel free to sit out anytime you like and catch up to us he was very very accommodating and very respectful towards the guests and to and towards the memory of those that had perished there yes and i think it's important to note that he was really good with the children because the children Mm -hmm. were less than 10 Mm -hmm. and the general recommended age for a first visitor to any of these camps is 14 mm-hmm. because it's very rough, it's very emotional, um, can be very graphic. Mm-hmm. And so it's generally not recommended. And so he handled it very well and said, this is up to you whether you expose them to this or not. I just want you to be aware so that you can make a fully informed decision. Mm-hmm. Um, I always have a hard time at the end when you see like the chambers and the crematorium. And so, I went in the first time on my first visit, and that was enough for me. Uh, I don't ever need to see that horrific sight again. And so we always try to plan that when we go to the camp with anybody, we have something nice afterwards because it can be a really... It's a sobering day. It is a very sobering experience, but again, definitely worth the visit always if you ever have the chance to go I always recommend going just make sure that you have something afterwards that's can kind of recharge you. yes recharge emotionally and nothing high energy nothing big but just something to kind of get you back into a spot where you aren't thinking about it all the time is 
the best way I can kind of describe it. Because mm-hmm. you don't want to forget it. And you don't want to say you're going to be ha-ha, joyful, happy afterwards. But you need something good afterwards. Mm-hmm. Something in light, light-hearted and enlightening. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. Spiel over on Dachau. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we went into Munich proper. We did. And it's funny because the day the day before we um, just looked on the on Facebook. on Facebook and there was a warning saying, "Hey, members of the DoD and their families should stay away because of protests." Protests. I don't remember what the protest was about, but apparently the next morning the um, the warning just went away, and so we went. Um, there were still protests. There were still protests, but everything was normal. Everything was fine. It was handled well. Handled well. But uh, <laughs> However, there was a vegan festival yeah. going on, and I have nothing against vegans, but it was very prominent. They were very pushy mm-hmm. and it, just extremely rude, and... They were very strategically placed at the Glockenspiel clock, which mm-hmm. fortunately the person on the big stage they set up kind of shut up after the music started. After the clock started. So yeah. I mean, he should have shut up before then. I mean, I think a few of us were ready to just grab him and push him off the stage. Yeah. Yeah. He kept asking. He was an American performing at this vegan fest or Canadian. He was from North America. He had absolutely no accent. He no spoke trace English. of any European accent. Yeah. That he we spoke could English perfectly. The grammar was spot on. Well, not... I mean, slang grammar, but you know. Yeah, but not stilted speech like you would have with someone that where English is their second or third language. Mm-hmm. Uh he was rapping in English. There was some... There was sort of, language. There was a lot of language. And he called his supporters the MF word. Yes. Which, I mean, you would think that's not a term that, we, that you would use for your supporters, but whatever. Not to my each, game. To each their own. To each their own. Exactly. Um, it, was, it was interesting. It was interesting, <laughs> to That's say the least. a nice way to put it. Very nice way. Uh, but good news. Honed in my photography skills, and I was able to get some cool shots. Without the without, festival. Without the festival in it. So they weren't, they weren't blocking the important things that we came to see, so that's good. Yeah, they were just placed in front of it. So you had to hear them if you wanted to see the clock. But it was kind of funny because once... Once the clock was finished chiming, and nearly everyone, like, it was like the parting of the Red Sea. It was yeah, hilarious because it's like, no, we're not here to see you. We're here to see the clock. Yeah. And we're not being rude towards vegans. Again, we have nothing against vegans. It was just that Power this particular, it was that this particular group was very rude, very strong languaged. Mm-hmm very pushy and not the they were not a good ambassador for their cause so there you go yeah that was all but uh (laughs) so that covered town and where all we've been what was your favorite country uh only because i've seen most i've seen comparatively speaking more of this country than the others i would say germany okay but I would love to go back to Austria. Mm. I would like to go back to um, Czech Republic. Oh my gosh, that reminds me. Almost forgot. Favorite thing, my very favorite thing in the Czech Republic was the Bone Church. Yes! How could we forget that? How did we not talk about this? Okay, you guys, the sec. <laughs> this church completely decorated with bones 100 percent. and in fact it's called um an ossuary yes the seckless the seckless ossuary or sequoid sedlec there we go sedlec ossuary and 
So over 60,000 bodies were used for this church for all of the ornamentation, Mm -hmm. I guess is the right word. Um, There are awesome pictures of it at the end of this. But it's about an hour away from Prague, and it was well worth the drive. Mm -hmm. So cool. And didn't most of the... um... Most of the remains come from uh, victims of the plague. Yes, a lot of them were victims of the plague. So that would that would explain because you know you've got hundreds of people dying all at once, mm-hmm. no real sanitary mm-hmm. place to bury these mm-hmm. bodies. Cemeteries were running out of room. Yep, and and this church was in the process of being rebuilt and restored at this point. During the plague, so that tells you how old this church building mm-hmm. is. Um, but their cemetery was out of room, and they were out of money to redo it and buy things for to decorate the church with. And so they just used the bones of the people in the cemetery so that new, new people, as they died, could be buried there. Mm-hmm. And it was just so, so... It was grim. It was grim. <laughs> but it was so, so cool. cool. <laughs> so cool. Um, the chandelier is beautiful, and I never thought I would say bones are beautiful, <laughs> but they were. Trust us. You'll see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what was your favorite food? My favorite food? Um, I really liked the... Um, <coughs> excuse me. I really liked um, a couple of dishes that I tried. So when we were in... Um, Umberg, we went to one of their favorite restaurants mm-hmm. just outside the town, and I tried the Jaeger schnitzel, mm. which is um, essentially hunter's hunter's schnitzel, mm-hmm. and it's a pork schnitzel. It's grilled instead of fried, but it has a um, brown gravy with mushrooms, onions, mm-hmm. veggies, and I had that with the spätzle, which is kind of a pasta dough. Mm-hmm. It's the uh, if you've watched The Sound of Music, it's schnitzel with noodles. It's mm-hmm. the noodles part. It's the noodles part in schnitzel with noodles. <laughs> yes. What else did you enjoy eating? I liked the curry verst as well. I hope so. I like so, that too. Mm-hmm. And it's essentially sausage that's been grilled, um, and it's covered in smothered. Smothered. <laughs> <laughs> sauce smothered in a sauce but it's like a um kind of like a very similar to barbecue sauce but mm-hmm. different spices a little mm-hmm. bit sweet very smoky and it has a little dusting of usually for garnish it has a little dusting of um tra- traditional yellow curry powder mm-hmm. but i could taste i could taste the curry in the in the sauce Okay. Uh, what was your favorite thing about just part of being here? Oh, I loved everything. How do you how do you pick just one favorite thing about being here? I know, but you have to pick one. Best mm. thing. My mom's. My mom will joke and say that the best thing about being here is the chimney cake proximity. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> chimney cakes are not a thing in Mississippi. I will say I do like that. Um, oh gosh, I liked being in such close proximity to um, to other countries, other experiences. That's the so. beauty of where we live. Mm-hmm. We are smack dab in the middle of Europe where mm-hmm. we live, so most and, things are like six to eight hours away at the farthest. Mm-hmm. And it's not like in the states where you go, oh, you know, unless you live on very close to a border, whether it's your state border or border of Canada or Mexico. Mm -hmm. It's not like that where, where you can just go, Oh, I think we'll, we've got some spare time. We'll go to Mexico today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or yeah. Czech border, as I've said many (coughs) times on the show is 45 minutes from my house, 45 minutes. People that live here cross the border to get their nails done. (laughs) So, I mean, that's just how close we are. Uh, Was there anything you didn't enjoy? I did not enjoy getting sick. 
I mean, I was expecting like maybe a cold at the most, but um, you've heard in, her coughing. Yes, I have gotten better in the past couple of days, and my voice is actually coming back. It is. It was gone for a while. Mm-hmm. But in when we were in um, Budapest, it was the morning. So to preface. Our second afternoon, I started, we just had some downtime in the hotel because we were all exhausted. And um, I started to get some tickles in my throat. And then that evening, it was like, okay, I've got a little bit of a sore throat. The next morning, I had a fever. I mean, achy. I didn't have a means to take my temperature, but I'm like, this is not good. Mm -mm. But fortunately, with... <laughs> got some ibuprofen in me lots of water and we were able to have fun on our tour of vienna i mom friended her every four hours i said take <laughs> ibuprofen because otherwise it was going to be bad mm. but uh this pretty much concludes for the most part our special episode together because you leave in less than 12 hours i know it makes me sad it makes me very sad but that just means that I'll be able to share my journey with my friends mm -hmm. back home. Exactly. So I have been so glad to have you here. Aww. And I think we're going to need to conclude by... Do, 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 do. <laughs> you were not prepared for that one. No! <laughs> <laughs>
thank you for being a friend Travel down the road and back again Your heart is true You're a pal and a confidant And if you threw a party You invited everyone you knew You wanna see the biggest gift would be from me And the card attached would say Thank you for being a friend Yay! Danke für haben Sie in meine Freunde Oh, bitte! Danke!